My brother and sisters, how are you all doing? All doing good? Yeah. So this e I mean, not evening yet. It's afternoon, right? Still afternoon? Is it afternoon or evening? Afternoon. <laughs> so it's this afternoon. And uh, the title of my sermon today is The Word of God. So we are studying the Word of God. There's a story, you know, somebody told me about a story. It's kind of funny. This story goes like this. So there's a, there's a class, a teacher, it's a kind of new teacher, you know, he teach in the children class. And, and the teacher tell a story to the student, to the kids in the class. And the story go like this. You know, as Jesus was walking by the street, he saw Peter's on the tree. And, uh, <laughs> and then the teacher and the student say, no, no, teacher, no, no, teacher, no, no, no. Say, wait, 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 wait a minute. Jesus was walked by the tree, and he saw Peter on the tree. He said, Peter, that place is not yours. It belongs to Zacchaeus. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a curious place. It's not your place. Come down. It's not yours. So um, it's like <laughs> it's it's a story in the Bible, and then that story, you know, it's uh, Jesus was walking by the street, and then there's a short man like me, and uh, his name is Zacchaeus, and so Zacchaeus was wanting to see Jesus. And the crowd was so large and a lot of tall people like Luke, you know, <laughs> and, and Stan, you know, and uh, Zacchaeus was wanting to see Jesus. But there's no way that Zacchaeus can see Jesus. So Zacchaeus know that Jesus was walking by that street. Zacchaeus saw a tree called Sycamore Tree have a lot of leaf. And then Zacchaeus, you know, able to climb, even though he's short, he risked his life and, you know, Climbed the tree and just just wanted to see who's Jesus, what Jesus looked like, and so that was the, that was a real story. It's a Kia, but you know the story you know that the, the teacher tell is like it's Peter who's climbing you know on a tree, so it's funny, right? <laughs> so it's important to know the word of God. So this is the Bible. The Bible have written. You know, for many thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And this Bible called the Word of God. And this Bible carry power of God in this Bible. But now you don't have to carry uh, that. You carry this. This one time, you know, I bring two. Because this one time was, I was teaching the pastor in the, in the village. I was teaching... And then some way, somehow, my, uh, at the time we used a Palm Pilot, you know, Palm, it's like a phone. And then some way, somehow, the, the, my Palm was fall off the puppet. And it scattered everything, the, the battery by battery, you know, and just everywhere. And then I lost my lesson. <laughs> I was so frustrated. So now I have two. Don't worry about it. If, if this one don't work, I have the other one. Yes. Yep. So anyway, it's the word of God. Let's go to the book of John. Is there a book of John in the Bible? Yes. The book of John. John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God in the beginning. Like in the beginning, before anything else, there was a word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Because God is the one that has the word. And that word has come out of God. He was with God. He was what? Word. The word was with, with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. 
that have been made. In him was life. Wow. Everything made and was made. And in that word, there was life. How many people live, have life today? All of us, right? That's why you get to be here. Through him, I mean, uh, I mean in him was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. Not just the life. That life. It's the light. It's the light of all mankind. This is the word from the Bible. The light shined in the darkness. And the darkness have not overcome it. And so the light of God is in the life. And that life carry, uh, that life carry light. And that light go into the darkness. And the darkness have no you know, um, right, I mean, the darkness, there will be no darkness after the light. Psalm chapter 119 was one, uh, 103 to 111. How sweet are your words to my taste. That word is so sweet. It's the word of God. Sweeter than honey to my mouth. I gain understanding from your percept, uh, precepts. I gain understanding. Therefore, I hate every wrong path. Your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. I have uh, taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous law. I have suffered much. Persevere. Preserve my life, Lord, according to your word. Accept, Lord, the willing praise of my mouth and teach me your laws. Through um, Though I constantly take my life in my hands, I will not forget your law. The wicked have set a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your precepts. Your statutes are my heritage forever. They are the joys of my heart. This is the word of God, my brothers and sisters. The word of God is so sweet. Sometimes we just hear the word and the oh, just the word. Actually, if you read this word, and that word is the word that carries so many things. Carry mental, carry power, carry authority of God with that word. That's why it's so important for all of us to use the word wisely. And God created us. God allowed us to speak to each other with the word. We use our words, but sometimes, my brothers and sisters, sometimes people use the word not so wise either, right? Sometimes people use the word to gossip. Oh, that's not right. Sometimes the people use the word to curse each other. Sometimes the people use the word, negative words, that is not right. The word is so important for God because the word was with God. Can you imagine if people continue to speak the negative words? And that person, people will identify them as a negative person. Oh, that person is so negative. Oh, that person always thinks wrongly about someone else. Have you ever encountered a person like that before? Anything, everything, they always think, oh, yeah, what, but, you know, oh, yeah, you know, I was going to do this, but, you know, they come up with ten and thousands of excuses. Once they have so many excuses, and then, guess what? They cannot do anything, because they said, I cannot do it. There's no way I could do this. There's no way I could do that. I am like this. I am like that. Just 
all the negatives comes out of their mouth. Have you ever think, have you ever experienced it yourself? Sometimes, you know, people want to be great, but they bring this negative thing into our life. And then we become fearful. We become not so brave, not so courageous because of the word that we say we cannot do it. We don't want to do it. We never have, we don't have enough training. We don't have this, we don't have that. Therefore, we cannot, that person cannot do it. But God, he himself is the sending the word to us. And that when we, as the believers, we carry that word and use the words for our lives. So the word of God is the word that coming from God and carry the power of God. Point number one, as the believers, or maybe we prepare to believe in the Lord, we need to study the word of God. You know, you might have heard this story. In my early faith, when I go to church, come to worship God at a church like this, I just worship like everyone else. But when we study the Bible, I just kind of be with everyone else. And this one day, a friend of mine from the Philippines, she asked me, did you read the word of God? I said, oh, I read it every day. And uh, she said, what part of the word? I said, oh, you know, I don't remember those words. <laughs> Actually, I was lying to her. I did not read the word. And uh, it's just because I don't know then. And then, you know, I have the Bible, so I have to read the word. So one day, if somebody to ask me, did you read the word? I would say, I read, I read the word. And what was it? I know what I read, right? So it's important for people that believe in God to study the word of God. So this is the Bible. And in the Bible, I have lots of words. And so we can study it. Look, it's in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. All scriptures is God's breath and is useful for teaching. It is useful. All the scriptures, it is useful, not useless. It's useful. It is powerful to use our word. Teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. In righteousness. In righteousness. So that the servant of God may be uh, thoroughly equipped for every good work. How many people want to do good work? Yes. When you do the good work, you just want to do according to the understanding. For example, people... You know, in this area, if you do this, they call good. If you do that, they call good. But the good work, we compare that good work with the word of God. When you want to do the right thing, the good thing, we need to study. We need to study the word of God and use it. This is how we have this church, New Life Fellowship of Churches. When we planned this church in 1994, we know that this is the church of the living God. And this church is a church that's supposed to grow. And this church is a church that do all the great work in the nation of Cambodia. For example, as like all the, the widows, the orphan. Then we saw a lot of orphans. We saw a lot of widows. What should we do? We have limited fun to help them. And we thought, oh, maybe we want to start orphanage as well. But if you want to do orphanage, it takes a lot of work as well. And we thought to ourselves, what if we do something a little bit different? We help them as well, but we do a little bit different. We do good work. And another work, we thought, oh, maybe we just help them alongside all of those kids that don't, that nobody help them, you know, we just 
put them in their family and we have them alongside. We don't want to take that kid away from their relatives, their uncle, or auntie, grandma, whatever, you know, and to put in one place. And it is, this is just, I, I, you know, we thought that way. Why don't we just put them with their family? And we go in weekly and support them alongside. That program we call Children at Risk. And we put them there with their uncle, auntie, and stuff like that, and we support them alongside. This is when we use the word. We don't want to, oh, 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 wow. Well, we need to put them with their relatives and then make them feel better. They live within the uncle, I mean, with, I mean, the same family with the uncle, auntie. They're still related to their relative rather than take them away from their relative. This is, we just use the word. See, when we study the word and we allow, allow that word to grow in us. And another scripture in Hebrew, chapter 6, verse 19 to 20. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firmed and secure. It enters this inner sanctuary behind the curtain. Verse 20, where our, uh, where our forerunner, Jesus, have entered on our behalf, we have become a high priest forever in the order um, in the order of Melchizedek. So we have this hope. The hope is an anchor for our soul. The hope in the Word of God. You know, in this life, if we don't have anything that we have hope for, and then we cannot lean on. It's so difficult. We have the word of God, the promises of God that allow us to have hope. And we lean on that hope. And that hope help us. It's an anchor that help our life can't be shakable and floated away. So get to know God's word better, my brother and sisters. Get to know God's word better. By make time to read, read the word and read it out loud. When you, when you just read the word, you sometimes you can read from, you know, beginning until the end. That's good. That's really good. Read the whole Bible is good. But also, when you read the word, you should read with. The, you know, like the phone and stuff like that. You can take note and a notebook or something like that. Sometimes you could read according to the topics as well. For example, you read through and then you read, the, oh, yeah, I want to I wanna know about healings. So you type healing in Google. You know, scriptures talk about healing and a lot of healings come. And then you use that and you write it down. You make it, you know, make a file for it. The other things like provision. You keep it the one day you will use it. Have anyone ever did that? Yeah? Yep. So if you do that, it's good. But if you don't do that yet, you can do it. It's, it, it's good. For example, when you're sick, when you get sick, you use all of those scriptures that my God can heal. My God is a healer. He can heal me. All that were brought to him, he healed them all. You know, I mean, like all of that, you say, that is an anchor for us. That's a hope for us. When we are sick, we bring all of those words and we just speak to it. Speak to our circumstances using the word of God. And that word of God carry the power of God. So it's important for us to read the word. And also group up the word. You know, it's important. You know, before, I don't know, I just read, you know. Sometimes it's like, come I said, you know, I just open up, you know, wherever there, just read it. You know, and the next day, just open up and read it. No, that is, that is one thing, but it's good. A good thing is just read, have a system of reading it, you know. Just bit by bit, bit by bit. Read from the beginning. Until the end, that's one thing. And the other thing, read according to the topics. In the technologies, thank God, 
that enable us to go through the whole Bible talking about so many things. Talking about how to love your husband, how to love your wife, how to honor authority or anything like that. You just type it scriptural, you know, and they come like a lot of scriptures for you, you know, with, uh, with the word of God. So it's important, you know, to read with the wisdom. Group it up. Group those words, group uh, promises of God. When you do it, also you will know the purpose of God. Then before, the oh, this word, it means like this. That words mean like that. For example, like uh, Pastor Panay shared, you know, for God so loved the world. And then when you read it just like that, oh, God loved, oh, yeah, of course. God is God, that's why he loves. God so loved the world. Who is God? Who is the world? God is holy. And then you, you study a little bit. God is holy. He has no sin. And God is the creator of the universe. Who is the world? Where are the people that live in the world? Who are the people? And he started to say, oh, people, when God created, the people were perfect. The people represent God. They live, they rule on this earth on behalf of God. And later on, people are committed sin. And still God loved them. And God wants to connect with them and continue to have relationship with this sinner and bring them out of sin. See, when, when you study, you allow the word to get into you and then you get to know it better. So, oh yeah, actually I'm not so good either. God loves me. God so loves me. Oh yeah, because of that love and give people the confidence to live their life because somebody loved them. So when you study the word, it's important for us, you know, getting to know what kind of circumstances that the word talking about. You just read the word and you, 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 you study a little bit, you will know. There are so many promises, you know, in the Bible. And so make the habit of study the word. And you will, we will, I will benefit from that word. So the word of God is God. Point number two, not just, just study the word. Read the word. Meditate on the word of God. Psalm 1.1, 1, 1, bless is the one, I read from NIV. Bless is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked. Or stand in the way that sinner take or sit in the company of uh, mockers. Uh, Psalm 1, 2, I read from the, the message. Instead, you thrill to God's word. Instead, you thrill. Just like really want to know, really, really love the word. Thrill to, to God's word. You chew on scriptures. Days and night. Just, just love the word. So love. David just really loved the word. And he loved the word and he chews on it. He thinks about what did, script, did that scriptures really means. Revelation 1, chapter 1, verse 3. Bless is the one who reads aloud the word of this prophecy. And bless are those who hear it. And take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. When you read the word, don't just listen. Read it, read it out loud and allow the word to get into our hearts. And you choose on the word and pray about the scripture. God, what, 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 did, what does it really mean? What does scripture really mean? God, can you teach me? You know, and um, people, so many people, they read the word and they write it down in a notebook and stuff like that. And they call like a, devo a devotional life. And they sell that devotional life like they make like millions of dollars. <laughs> they, just, they just do it. And so sometimes, you know, people just do it. 
you read and you choose on it, you know, and study it. Try to get to the root of the word, like what I just said. And allow that root to get into your heart. Get the word as an anchor for your soul as well. Point number three. Use the word of God for our daily livings. Proverbs 6, 20 to 22. My son, keep your father's command. The command is the word as well. And do not forsake your mother's teaching. That's the word as well. Bind them always on your heart. When you hear the word, just keep the word in the heart. Not, you know, just keep the word in the head. Fasten them around your neck. Tie on your neck. When you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. Can you imagine you, you live your life every day? And then there's something that tells you to do always. It's really important. Or you go straight. Or you turn left. Or you turn right. That's the word of God. When you walk, they will guide you. This is the word of God. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you awake, they will speak to you. This is important. That we have the word of God. The Word of God is for all of us because God loves us. Number chapter 20, verse 78. The Lord said to Moses, take the staff and you and your brother Aaron gather the assembly together. Speak to the rock before their eyes and it will pour out its waters. See, at that time, there is no water. And God said, just speak. Just speak to the rock. Before when there's no water, God tell Moses to use his staff to strike the rock. But this time God said, Moses, you just speak to the rock. You will bring water out of the rock for the community so they and their livestock can drink. You know, at that time, Moses was so upset at the people around him because everyone complained to Moses. Come on, how come we don't have water? How come we don't have, how come we don't have? Too many complaints. It forces Moses to strike the rock rather than speaking to the rock. Oftentimes, my brother and sisters, our word is so powerful. God tell us to use our word. Sometimes we don't want to use our word. We want to use somebody else's word. Sometimes we don't know that we could do it. But God tell us to do it. We could do it. In the book of Mark, chapter 11, verse 23 to 24. Truly I tell you, if anyone say to this mountain, if anyone say to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in their heart but believes that what they say will happen it will be done for them therefore i tell you whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you have received it and it will be yours this is the word so many mountains in the journey of our life so many mountains. These mountains require you to speak to it. Mountain, you have no right to be in front of me. I command you to go. Mountain, you have no right to touch my mom. Mountains, you have no right to touch my dad. Mountain, you have no right to touch my brothers. Mountain, you have no right to touch my sisters. These sicknesses, these diseases... When you speak to it, by believing it, that word will kill that germs. That word will kill that bacteria. This one, one time, you know, I was sick so bad. In the middle of the night, I was so sick. I go to the bathroom like three times. The third time, I almost cannot 
walk out of the bathroom. The bathroom outside the house. I kind of crawl out of the bathroom. But I believe, God, there's nobody could help me in the middle of the night. At that time, I sleep alone. I say, God, come and help me. I tell you what, that night, I feel like the presence of the Lord, you know, cover over me. I feel the love of God so strong. Just to say that word, God, I cannot do it. I thought I was going to die because there's no energy at all in my body. Guess what? The next day, I'm just normal because God has power. I speak to that mountain. That mountain have to go. The word of the Lord is an instrument for our soul, my brothers and sisters. And sisters, use the word of God. And we, that we group up before. For the circumstances, this one day, Israelites are facing the enemies, fighting, you know, with the army of Israel. In 1 Samuel was chapter 17, verse 45 to 46. All the heroes in Israel, all the warriors, nobody brave enough to fight with Goliath. Because Goliath had so many experiences in wars. So King Saul had so many experience, experiences in wars as well. And he wins so many battlefields. But with Goliath, because with his own eyes, hey, he can see that Goliath is so big. He's so shoot, and he has so many experiences in the war. Every time the scripture said, Goliath come to the front line, everyone just run away. This one day, the shepherd boy go to visit his brothers in the battlefield. Bring some bread, some cheese and stuff to his brother in the battlefield. He was so disturbed because this guy, this shepherd boy that knows God. This shepherd boy, when he's in the field, he loves the word of God. He loved to spend time with the word of God. This shepherd boy said to the Philistine, You come against me with a sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand. What did he use? He used the word. Before he fight, he used the word. You come against me with all things, with your experiences. I also have experiences in the Lord my God. You, today, you have no more chance to be a pride person anymore. You are so proud before with somebody else. But with me, I have the power of God. With me, I have God with me. Today, you will not live anymore. You know? And, and I strike you down and cut off your head. This very day, I will give the um, uh, carcasses of the Philistine army to the word of the wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. There is a God. That live in you. That there's a God that live in you. And that God give you his word. And that word is so powerful. My brothers and sisters. This life is not easy. This life is so hard. But. Use the word of God. Read the Bible and choose on it. And allow the word to become part of you. And then you will see the fruit that come out of it. Another day, another time, the Apostle Paul, he got arrested and put in the ship. And the ship got wrecked because of the big storm. And go to this island. And they start the fire because they were so cold. And the snake, the poisonous snake, bite him. And the villagers thought, this guy going to die soon. 
Because that snake is poisonous. But I tell you what, the poisonous snake had no power over Paul, who the one that knows the word of God, who's the one that carry the word of God. Could we stand, my brothers and sisters? The, the word of God is so important for all of us as the believers. The word of God will help all of us to go through this life easier than it is. And allow the word of God to get into our heart, not just our head. This word of God is a treasure for our life. And keep using it and take it along with us. Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters, Lord God, getting to know your word better, Lord God. And Lord God, help us to use this word in our lives, Lord God. Help us to lean onto the word. Help us to be brave and take courageous because we have the word in us. We will juice that word. We will strike the enemy with the word of God. The enemy cannot overcome us because we have this word. Thank you, Father, Lord God. Watch over my brothers and sisters. Give them the power of Christ. That, Lord God, that we could step over the enemy's head. Thank you, Father. And provide everything that my brothers and sisters need in their life, Lord God. In the mighty name of our God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for being here with us. If you need any prayer or anything like that, you know, our team are ready to pray for you. So God bless you.